Chapter 11 Go Time Reports of the column approaching started to roll in from the woods net. There were eight troop transport vehicles, an old deuce and a half command vehicle with the big box command center that had slide out sides once deployed to the tactical overwatch position. These vehicles moved slowly down the road leading to the objective on the mountain. They checked each home on the road leading in and found them all abandoned. There was a large truck turnaround at the end with the objective road veering off to the right. This is where Ratcliffe would set up his command center and run the operation. Ghost's men were deployed west of this area and were observing and passing intelligence as the group of about 25 PRC militia fighters prepared their staging area. The men and women on this attachment would set up the command and control truck, military GP tents, and establish a security perimeter around the area, including blocking the road. Once the area was prepped and secured, they would wait until first light to begin the assault. House Randall had 25 acres split into three paddocks, one for sheep, one for alpaca, and one for the rest of the animals they had, chickens, turkeys, hogs, and a few goats. The sheep and alpacas each had a pair of Great Pyrenees livestock guardian dogs. While not trained like the Ravenshire dogs, these dogs would fight and kill woodland predators and not even be phased if a pack of coyotes came in to kill the sheep. These were big, mean dogs with one mission, to protect the animals under their watch. This also included the two-legged kind of predator. It wasn't much more than a year ago. A person passing through decided to snatch up a chicken from the farmstead, and unfortunately for him, he was mauled by the big dogs and killed. The Randalls set the mangled corpse in a folding chair at the side of the road by their driveway with a sign hanging from what was left of the man's neck saying chicken thief. This was to help deter any other passerbys from thinking about a free chicken or turkey dinner. The assault team was comprised of three five-man fire teams. They would lead the assault on the first farmstead. The remaining teams were security and operations, protecting the rear and serving as command and control. Dillon was a commo man, recently in the U.S. Army. He worked in many tactical operations centers. He had only been back a week from his last deployment when the shit hit the fan. Coming home to Virginia in an empty home, he searched for weeks to try and find his family, then ultimately was picked up by the PRC sweeping team and given the choice of fight or die. Dylan joined the PRC and was immediately moved into the militia. While outwardly walking the walk to keep suspicion down, he would sabotage missions, provide bad intel, and slightly give an edge to the resistance while ensuring his escape. He worked his one-man crusade to try and reach Tennessee, where he was to meet up with his group in Farmersville. Dylan was now less than two miles from home and was in full control of the battle space. He had to prep his gear and then would make a break for it. He had no way to alert Bill as the combo plan that was being used was his own and it had specific fail-safes for just this occasion. 0600. Ratcliffe spoke to Dylan. Let's make the final checks and get this shit show going. Dylan replied, Roger that. He made his final check of the combo gear and the primary radio failed. Damn it, Dylan said. This was working fine yesterday. He keyed up another radio for backup and it failed. Dylan looked at Ratcliffe. These radios are blowing fuses. I'm going to have to get more from the combo guy with the town assault team. What the fuck? Ratcliffe yelled. We are less than 30 minutes from getting this op going, and now both radios are down? Yes, sir, Dylan replied. Well, how long will it take you to get the parts and fix this? They are less than 15 minutes away. I can haul ass and get there and be back to kick this off. Go! Ratcliffe boomed. Dylan opened the back of the mobile command truck and jumped down and went to the old CUCV blazer. He rolled past the checkpoint and told the team manning it he would be right back. Dylan would not be back. This was his chance to make it to Ravenshire. The rear was about to have a really bad day. All the fire team radios should be shutting down within a few minutes, as Dylan conveniently forgot to charge the radios the night before. This would be due to the panic that Dylan was about to deliver. 
Inside the combo truck was a Claymore mine hidden in a rucksack filled with empty brass cartridges. It was hooked to a remote detonator which was in Dylan's hand. He was a half a mile away when he pressed the button. The combo truck with the four remaining ops people and Ratcliffe would be completely shredded and anyone in close proximity would be killed. The fire team units would all be trying to talk to command and control and depleting the batteries on their handhelds and the shit was going to go sideways from there. Moss and Ghost radioed the command center, informing them of the explosion. They were quickly instructed to take out the remaining militia members, who were all trying to get into cover. The fire team started to work their way back towards the staging area, where they took fire from both sides of the road, pinning them down in a crossfire. Eric radioed the command post, Chaos 3, Charlie 2. The radio crackled. Go ahead, Chaos 3. Eric replied, This fight was over before it even started. There was a large explosion and the forward assault team tried to return to the staging area, and we ambushed them on the road. Two wounded in custody, over. Charlie, too. Good copy. Nice work out there. Maintain position in case of any reinforcements coming to help. Eric replied, Chaos 3, good copy. We'll relay to the teams. Chaos 3, out. Charlie, 2, out. Dylan sped away as he was nearing the now almost naturally reclaimed dirt road. He was passed by three troop transport trucks coming from the town, just a few miles ahead. Shit, Dylan said, as he pulled the old Chevy Blazer onto the dirt road and hopped out to lock in the hubs on the four-wheel drive. Back in the truck, he put it in four-wheel low and proceeded to navigate the now very technical off-road course the old road had turned into. This road was near impassable by vehicles. However, ATVs and UTVs kept it wide enough to enjoy the challenges the road provided in its current state. Dylan got to a point where he could no longer drive the truck, and he was now two miles away from Ravenshire. If he played his cards right, he would be able to make it to the retreat without getting shot. Dylan unloaded the gear from the old blazer. There were several duffel bags filled with documents, commo gear, and weapons. Dylan also had several ammo cans of different types of ammo and ordnance. When the last can of ammo was put into the hasty cache, he covered it all with leaves and brush and took a hundred paces to the large oak where he marked the front with his knife to form an arrow. This wouldn't mean anything to anyone but him. When this was over, he would bring Bill down to retrieve it, and they would have somewhat of an edge for future battles. Today, however, the mission was to survive. The PRC radio channel was a buzz, the abject failure of the initial attack on the mountain now being analyzed and understood to be more of a problem than originally anticipated. Another PRC unit was rerouted to take the town. This was a hundred man strong unit with a very bad reputation. The unit Dylan was with, mostly just kids with no more combat skills than cheating at Call of Duty and high-fiving each other when they took out an old couple just scraping by. By now, most of them lay dead. In their last seconds, realizing there's no respawn, just game over. Dylan grabbed the M249 squad automatic weapon from the front seat. He had a 200 round nutsack already on it, ready to go. He would carry th three small 100 round nutsacks in his fight light backpack. This was a heavy loadout, Dylan thought, but if he was going to make it to Ravenshire, this was a small price to pay. With any luck, there'd be no contact on his hike, and it would be a great addition to the retreat's defensive capabilities. Dylan did 50-yard SLLSs, or stop, look, listen, and smells. It was slow but methodical. About an hour had gone by as he came upon an old graveyard. Dylan stopped there for a break, looking at the old marker stones, some slanted back from shifting over time others laying flat on the ground of the mostly forgotten graveyard. He was seeing the names of the Civil War veterans, even a few Revolutionary War vets. Dylan called out to the invisible troops, I need your strength, honor, and courage today, men. A great evil has taken over our lands, and today many of my friends are going to pay the price to protect our freedoms. He felt peace enter his head, and the racing thoughts seemed to slow down for a minute. He said a prayer to the Most High asking for safe travels to Ravenshire and to protect those that were defending it. His peace was disrupted by two men dressed in PRC 
militia uniforms walking down the road towards the graveyard. Dylan hid just over the bank on the back side of the graveyard as the two approached. One of the men said, hey, check this shit out. The two entered into the small graveyard and began to read out the names. One unzipped his pants and pissed on a marker. Fuck the South, he said. The other man looked at him. You ain't right, pissing on a grave, bro. That shit is going to haunt your cracker ass. The men were only six or seven feet from Dylan at this point. He could smell the man's pee. The two men were just about to leave when both their radios crackled. Smith, Jones, need you back at the cabin. Shit's going sideways. Where are you guys? Roger that. Me and Smitty are down around the corner by the old graveyard. We'll be there in 15. Roger that. Be here in 10. Jones looked at Smitty. You heard the man. Let's get a move on. Smitty grumbled. Fuck that guy. They both laughed. Dylan knew the attack plan was being moved up, and soon these guys would be assaulting Ravenshire. Dylan knew the terrain was in Bill's favor here for any assault from the woods would be literally up super steep slopes, meaning this land was so steep it was hard to go up in good times, let alone with people shooting down on you. These guys must be going to use the road and try to assault from the front gate. The sensor on the property line would alert the retreat, so this would be good. The main issue was not to get shot. Dylan worked his way around to get a good vantage point on the cabin. This way he could see how they were going to deploy and he could work the flanks to soften them up. If he did his job right, these guys would be outmanned and outgunned in short order. Dylan found a good spot and made a hasty hide to monitor. He could see three crew cab type side by sides parked in front of the old cabin. A few guys on the porch smoking cigarettes. Dylan also knew no patrols would be coming down this way from the retreat as it was in lockdown and defense mode with the current assault. If he keyed up the radio, the teams in the cabin would know they were exposed. What to do, Dylan thought. Think. Damn it, think. Chapter 12. Sucker Punch Moss radioed the command post. More trucks approaching. Looks like eight or nine. Two Hummers with a 50 cal and one with a Mark 19 appear to be up armored. Rest look to be troop transport and support vehicles. Moss was an army vet serving in Iraq and Afghanistan doing two tours in each country. When he came home he found society to reject him and the new world he came back to strange and different from when he left. People now had made up pronouns. Children were mutilated voluntarily by their parents to change their genders. The U.S. even had transgendered people in high-ranking positions. This was all too much for Moss, so he faded into the woods, where by chance he met Ghost, and he never looked back. People that go against God by manipulating his work were people he could not trust. Whatever happened to the people had permanently changed humanity, and the mainstream just went along with it and promoted it. When the people stray away from God, the end is very near. I won't be part of that system anymore, Moss said to himself. Moss repositioned his two fire teams. He knew the advancing column would dismount and lead with the heavy guns. The soft targets would be to the rear, and that is where he and his brothers would start to break them down. Eric and the forward defense force would move from the original ambush site and step it back to his retreat's fighting positions. This would suck the new attackers into the mountain road deeper. They only had one option and that was the road. The terrain was not in the favor of the enemy, and all the people on the mountain road had all the premium overwatch positions hardened and manned. The column was where the road block was set up. The two sentries fell in with the reinforcements. The Hummer with the Mark 19 would lead in followed by the 50 cal. Hammer 2-9, Hammer Actual. The Mark 19 gunner radioed Clear to staging. Myself and Hammer 2A are in position. It's a mess here, Colonel. Hammer actual. Roger. Copy. Any signs of the resistance? Hammer 2-9. Negative. There are a few survivors here, all badly wounded. Copy. Hammer actual out. Hammer 2-9. Standing by. The rest of the convoy approached the staging area, only to find a gory battle scene. Many dismembered bodies and limbs on the ground. 
whatever happened here was not something these teams were used to, and this really left a psychological mark on the minds of the PRC militia troops. They began to question what their true mission was. These were Americans, just like them, sucker punched into a decision to join or die for the Chinese. Many of these young Americans were so blinded by social media narcissism and backstabbing their way to the top. It was survival of the fittest in these units, and the manipulation for one's own personal gain was playing out in these units. There were also true patriots like Dylan, pretending to be loyal while sabotaging the enemy within. In just about every one of these units, there was a Dylan quietly working alone and defeating the enemy slowly, day by day. Some would get caught and killed or made an example of in front of the other enslaved fighters to keep them in line. And sadly, no one would ever know the true heroes they were. Wartello was the colonel over this sector. He was not used to losing. He realized he was in the area that would require more manpower to suppress and root out the resistance in this area. He also recognized he was dealing with an organized group of people who had everything to lose and would fight it out to the death to protect it. He radioed his commander. Get me Commander Zhao. Commander Zhao was in charge of the PRC military unit based out of Asheville, North Carolina. He oversaw the takeover operations via satellite comms, which were hit and miss, and would mobilize PRC troops to support the militia teams. Commander, this is Wartella. We're in a hot mess here in Farmersville, Tennessee. We need more manpower to suppress this town and surrounding areas. Guerrilla warfare is taking its toll. We are down 30 men in just the first hour of operations and have taken no ground on the objective. Over. Zhao responded, Your abject failure is unacceptable. I will reroute the Ramirez operations group to your location. Coming in on the east side, we'll sandwich the town and the area of this mountain road. Time to target 24 hours. Do you copy? Wartella responded, Yes, sir. I appreciate it, sir. Wartella out. He disconnected the sat phone and let out a heavy sigh. This would not end well for him if he did not succeed with this mission. He keyed up his radio. All units stand by for priority traffic. Dylan perked up. Radio traffic was not organized, with many people just trying to figure out what was going on. Wartella spoke. Our assault team led by Major Ratcliffe has been eliminated. We have suffered a great loss losing him and his team. Break. We need to pull together and root this rabble out of this mountain. Any units attached to Ratcliffe are now under my command. You need to check in and give me a sit rep so you can be accounted for. Dylan heard a cheer go out from the cabin. The vehicles he passed on his way out were now leading the assault on the mountain. Who is going to attack the town, he thought. I need to trigger the perimeter alarm for the south property line, Dylan thought to himself. This will give Ravenshire a heads up. Protocol will have a drone patrol check out the alert. Dylan knew that there was a sensor close to him, maybe a hundred yards or so. He started to move towards that direction. He also knew the retreat just heard that radio call out and were listening. So now was the time to trigger the alarm. Between that and the sit rep that would soon come, Bill would know the bad guys were danger close. Dylan moved through the tree line, which was overgrown with briars, and every step was painful. He finally got out of the thorn bushes and crossed the old dirt road. Twenty yards in was the first sensor. He moved in front of it, waiting for the alert to go off. Nothing. Shit. Were the batteries dead? He keyed in the frequency from the sensor into his Baofeng radio and spoke. Alert zone 4. Alert zone 4. Then he made his way back. Two squelch brakes came back. Dylan knew he had reached the T-Sock. Ravenshire T-Sock. Who is that, Shelby asked her father. Bill replied, we just got a tip, I think. I know from who. Have Sam take a bird to investigate the neighbor's cabin to the south. Chaos Actual, Raven 5, Shelby spoke into the radio. Sam replied, Raven 5, go ahead. I need to send one of your little birds to check a contact. Swing by the T-Sock for briefing. Raven 5, good copy, on my way, Sam replied. As he headed to the C-Sock, 
Sam had two of the retreat's drones prepped and ready for flight, so now all he needed was the area to watch, and he would be airborne in a few minutes. What's going on, Dad? Sam asked. Bill replied, someone called in alert zone 4. It sounded a lot like Dylan. Dylan? Sam replied. Bill said, yeah, it's been a hot minute, but it sure sounded like him to me, and he would know what zone that was, so it must be him. Okay, I will get airborne in 5, Sam said. Bill nodded. Check that cabin out real good. I will be watching on the feed. Roger that, Sam said, as he took off to launch the little drone. The drone's monitor synced up with the RTMP server, and Bill could see the drone's camera feed. He watched as Sam lifted the little bird off and headed south. It was getting late in the afternoon. Bill radioed Sam, Raven 5, take it up 2,000 feet. I don't want anyone hearing that bird if they're outside. Sam replied, Roger that. The ground below the little drone started to get small as a 4K feed followed the road to the neighbor's house. Clearly in view were three side-by-sides. There was a small fire in the fire pit with two men around it appearing to be cooking. More men were seen milling about on the front porch. Chaos Actual, Raven 5, take it up 500 more and head west then arc it home. Raven 5, good copy. The little drone peeled left then went west and came back in low over the road and returned to base. Once back, Bill radioed the command post. KS Actual, Charlie 2. Charlie 2, go ahead. Charlie 2, we have hostiles south of our position, approximately one half mile. Three crew cab military style side by side staged at the old cabin. Eight enemy combatants visible on drone feed. How copy? Good copy, Chaos Actual. Do you need more of us to head your way? Chaos Actual, negative. We will be able to keep them out. We have enough defenders to take care of it. Just be advised, these guys are here. There may be more teams between us. Watch your back, Charlie 2. Roger that, Chaos Actual. Charlie 2 out. Chaos Actual out. Sam came down to the T-Sock. What do you think, old man? Bill replied. Well, I think we have a problem south. So I'm going to say, if they are pushed up this far, we have become a target. Knowing the shit show at the west end, that means we should expect some type of force coming in from the east side. And somewhere out there is Dylan. I do not know what his condition is or his plan to make it inside. And worse, there will be no way to bring him in without someone here killing him. So we kind of got a shit-filled burrito on our hands, son. Does that sum it up for you? Sam looked at his father. So what you're saying is ops normal? Carry on? Bill laughed. Indeed. Keep the watch groups on post. Gather up the defenders for a briefing, then rotate them so we can brief the watch group. Sam looked at his father. Roger that. I'm on it. Bill printed out Dylan's picture from the Ravenshire roster and made several copies so it could be passed around for the defenders to memorize. Bill also told them he may be in regular clothes or even militia uniform, but do not hesitate to shoot a PRC militia member for fear it might be Dylan. Dylan knows what he is doing, and we have to trust him and his plan to get in. Remember, he is in a tight spot here, and we really want to get him inside, but we cannot risk contact with the hostiles next door. Are there any questions? The group was silent. Good. Go relieve the watch group and have them meet here. I will tell them the same. Slingshot to hammer actual. Stand by for sit wrap. Hammer Actual, go ahead, Slingshot. Slingshot, Hammer Actual. Three fire teams at an abandoned cabin, 0.5 mile from a resistance stronghold. We have limited intel on the stronghold and no sign of roving patrols. We also have three Polaris M Razors for Transpo, standing by for orders. How copy? Hammer Actual, good copy, Slingshot. Stand by for new orders. Bill started to record the transmission on the commo laptop connected to the radio. Bill sat there silent. Come on. Send it. He sat there nervous and worried. Come on. The radio crackled. A thick Latin voice came over the radio this time. It was Ramirez. Anaconda actual, hammer actual. 
Anaconda online, staging two miles east at Old School. Ortella responded, Good copy. Glad you are here, Caesar. Ramirez replied, We'll be ready for the party. We need to rest and feed our troops. Good copy. We'll switch to command channel Bravo 1-3. Copy. Bravo 1-3. Anaconda out. Hammer out. Bill switched the handheld to B-Zone channel 13. Within a few seconds, Wartella came on the air. Ramirez, do you copy? Roger that, Colonel. Wartella replied, how many are with you? Ramirez replied, I have 80 combat ready with 20 support people. We drove all day to get here from the south, Ramirez said. Wartella replied, Roger that. I think we are going to need them for this one. Ramirez spoke, I heard you have had some hard luck. We will be the pry bar. Roger that, Wartella replied. 0600, good for you. Roger that, 0600, good copy. Hammer out. Anaconda out. Bill sighed. Damn it, this is going to be a shit show. 80 fighters coming his way. 15 more right next door. Bill's going to be in the pincher and was going to have to get out. He went to the chat console for the HF radio and typed a message to Jerry. It read, Hey brother, I'm in a very bad spot under siege, sandwiched between the enemy on three sides. This might be my last chat. I just want to say we will give them hell. Hope the rest of the country knows they are not alone, and your networks are all working hard. We're counting on you. If you don't hear from me within the next 48 hours, know we are with the Lord, and we'll watch over you, my friend. Godspeed. Good luck, Bill. Now that that was taken care of, time to whoop some commie ass. Chaos Actual, Charlie 2. Charlie 2, go ahead. Cheryl, bravo, Oscar, double time. Good copy, Bill. Loading up the burn barrel. We'll be there in 15 mics. Copy, Chaos Actual out. Chaos Actual, all Chaos units, stand by for priority traffic. Chaos Actual, all Chaos Unit. The enemy has us surrounded on three sides. There are a total of 95 bad guys coming from the east and south of Ravenshire. Fight like hell to get back here, boys and girls. We will hold them off for as long as we can. You all know what to do. Be smart, don't panic, and break them down. You are going to hear some things very soon. Hold your positions, do not panic, and stick to the plan. Charlie 2 is en route with her team. Once she is here... The party will start. Stay frosty, watch your six, and do your jobs. God bless each and every one of you. Chaos Actual out. Raven 5, Raven 6. Go ahead, Raven 6. Gather five good guys, son. Meet me in the courtyard. Roger that. Be there in five. <laughs> 